best for it. Hello everyone. We are joined Hello. with uh, Bembo of Uniquely Geekly and some uh, artists. We are joined by we are joined by <laughs> Ollie Moss and Hello. Jock. Uh, this uh, session has been uh, quite hotly anticipated by the poster community. Um, so uh, thank you everybody for coming in and, and, uh, and coming in to, to watch. Um, ben, obviously, I mean, none of th this particular session, it, it wouldn't have happened without, uh, without you. So thank you, Ben. Um, I had this idea. I haven't told, I didn't say this in, while we were in the, in the call just off, off the, off screen, but I had this vision. I was like, do you think Ollie would ever do a session? I said, asked last year and I said, what if we made like a care package? Do you think if I if I made a care package with like a handwritten oh. note, would he? And it turned of out Garfield like, products. All yeah, it, <laughs> Garfield products. You see, I would do. You know, maybe find some vintage uh, uh, Garfield print, uh, like embossed letters, le uh, like paper with uh, you know. Like Beautiful. Um, but uh, all it took was uh, as an email, apparently. Um, so thank you very much, both for joining. Um, oh my and, pleasure. Ben, if you could talk a little bit about firstly before, uh, just so they get the relationship, how you, you know, what your relationship is with these, uh, with these guys. And it's terrible. It's, it's terrible. a nightmare. It's a nightmare. He's, yeah, he's, it's the worst. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's, he's muted as well, so we can't muted. even hear. Yeah. That's that's Maybe. that's indicative of our relationship. Hello, Ben. Ben, we can't hear. Communication. Yeah, there we go. Is he frozen or is it just audio? No, he's gone. Okay. Now Jock's gone. Um, no, there's Jock. Oh, really? No, 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 no. no, no. That was, sorry, I, I clicked a thing and I shouldn't have clicked it. That was my, yeah. Okay, you're, well, you're, you're, Ben is there, but I can't hear Ben. Um, for, I, I, this question is, uh, is, is, perhaps a bit a bit redundant but for the people who don't know necessarily who you guys are um in terms of your design background and, and what you and what you do if, if we could start with ollie uh give a bit of a sort of uh, the essence of what you are uh, what you what you do in terms of design in terms of your range of of work right well um i guess uh for a long time it was mostly sort of print and poster design um which i guess is the sort of thrust of, of this this talk um, and then about, uh, in 2016, I started, I, uh, had a crack at, um, art directing a video game, which I really enjoyed. And I've sort of moved a bit further in that direction recently. I've been like doing, um, art, uh, concepts and production design for the video game industry for like the last four years now, which has been an interesting change of pace, but it's been really cool. Um, uh, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. And Jock? Uh, yeah, I, I I started out doing comics, or at least I started out wanting to draw comics, and I did that, um, and that led into other avenues that I wasn't expecting, but in a really nice way. Um, I did uh, I've done some film design um, for a number of films that that started out from one of my comics called The Losers that I did with Andy, Andy Diggle that was picked up as a movie and met a That's director. Right, yeah. That's right, and actually, Ollie d designed the, the 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 logo sequence, the the, the intro sequence, and the, and the credit sequence for the losers. Me, uh, you know, so there's a bit of trivia for you um, film fans out there. Uh, that's how I met Ollie. So we were, I mean, I loved his stuff anyway, but we we're chatting on Twitter, and he was like, "I actually work, worked." Uh, what was the company called again? It was um, uh, Prolog. Kyle Prolog, yeah, right? Yeah, Carl Cooper's um, um, yeah, uh, company. company. And, and they they did the intro sequence for the losers and and the credit sequence and it turned out that Ollie designed those so I was like oh no way not only do I love your stuff you actually fiddled around with my some of my junk as well. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I fiddled around with your junk before so, we even met each other. 
Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, and and, and the, the the original director on the Losers, um, I, I went on to do some concept work for another of his films, and that led to other concept stuff, which has been great. And then Ollie introduced me to Mondo as well. Funny enough, I'm realizing that Ollie is uh, is uh, um, uh, a unique part of of the of the of the of the mix of things. Yeah, because in fact he introduced me to Mitch and Rob and Justin Ishmael at the time at Mondo, and and. Um, Luckily, they knew my stuff anyway, and I started working for Mondo as well. Um, and uh, yeah, I realised that's um, I think it's this November is ten years since I did my first uh, Mondo poster. So yeah. it's been uh, it's been a good you know considering I, ju I just tried to get into this straw comics. It's been amazing how I've got to work on a number of other you know really cool things. And it's um, and it's now Sunday. I've had a Sunday roast with my family, and uh, here we are. Nice. I haven't had a Sunday roast in two years. Oh man! So what's replaced? Yeah, I know. That? What's replaced that, Ollie? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> just a is big it, empty vacuum. <laughs> no, it's just like it's it's just like right. Well, uh, if I want to do it, you have to do it all yourself, and it's a bit sort of miserable to do it all by yourself. And I stopped cooking meat at home for um, environmental right. reasons, and you can't like get a Sunday roast in America, so it's. It's, it's a real, it's a real, like gaping void in my life. You could just do it. Just get, just, just, just do a one off. Just get. Yeah, some I mean, stuff, we do, uh, we do it for like Christmas and stuff, but it's just, it's not, it's not the same. It's, yeah. it's a whole big rigmarole. Can't just go to my mum's house and get one. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Last bit of post yeah. Um, uh, so the key theme uh, for the convention is composition. Um, and it would just be good to hear from you guys. Uh, and I know it's been a while, as you as you indicated earlier, it's been a while since you. We were chuckling. Chuck and I, we talked um, the other day when I got popped over, and uh, he said that I've invited two people to talk about movie posters who don't do movie posters at the moment. We both had a big gap. Both be doing other projects. <laughs> I'm just relieved that your audio works, Ben, because so I was I. sort of <laughs> secretly shitting myself that you uh, you weren't going to speak. My new fancy earpieces. I don't know how to work. Uh, it's like you know, it's like when you're in a band and the guitarist brings a new pedal. And he's like, I've got this new pedal I'm going to use, and you're like, oh, he's not going to, have to use it. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, if you could just go into a little bit about uh, how you approach composition. I mean, obviously we're in the context of, of posters, but you both when you're not even not even if you're not doing like posters as we as we we you know within this uh, this is about movie posters, but you do design all day every day is yeah i mean day. like composition doesn't it, it's not exclusive to poster or print design right it's like it it's the foundation for basically any visual art that you do i sort of genuinely think it's probably the most important thing because it's the it's the thing that helps communicate the piece really clearly and quickly like even if like, so so i mean for me i like to start really 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 small and if you can create something that's legible at this size, and then as you expand it, it's still going to like keep that graphic read. Um, even when I'm doing like concept art for a video game, where the um, the intention isn't necessarily just to be like a striking piece of artwork that someone would put on their wall, composition is still like right. I'm leading someone's eye around the frame and communicating the correct details in like the correct order. So you like look here. You get an overall read, then your eye moves around the piece, and you're like picking up more information as you as you're going through. I, I mean, there's tons of different um, sort of like elements of design and artwork, but composition, I still think, is probably the most important like foundation of all of, of all of it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, it's, when I started doing comics, that was one of the things that I really wanted to bring to it was like a design sense, you know, composition that isn't often seen in comics. Um, you know, because one of the nice things about drawing comics and posters as well, of course, but my, you know, back in the day when I was just trying to figure all this stuff out, um, it, it was comic books. And, uh, you know, they're really kind of, really sort of standard. They're, they're really almost simple and, and mm. straightforward and, frankly, sometimes not very interesting. And it was really actually quite easy to sort of bring in other influences. Like I love, like, you know, 20 years ago when I got into it now, but like I love sort of uh, skate magazines and wide angle lenses and interesting compositions where someone will be up in the corner and you get this texture mm. of, of the concrete down below and the sky behind them. And it was really simple and striking and open as well. It was open, like comics tend to be really busy, you know, and, and mm. 
I don't think that that's always to their benefit sort of thing. So, so I try to bring a starkness to them and hopefully some sort of design sense that was maybe, I don't want to say lacking because that's a, that sounds a bit arrogant, but like, you know, I, I, I just tried to bring a different influence to it, which seemed to go down quite well and then people seemed to like it. And, 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 and that, that fed through to obviously to poster design. Cause that's, that's, you know, like Ollie said, it's, it's, you know, it's the most important aspect really in, in any visual art, but with poster design, particularly you've got to portray the elements of story you know, atmosphere, sense of 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 the feel of, of the film. You know, which isn't always, uh, um, you know, it, it isn't always done with 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 the actual kind of posters that studios put out for movies. You know, there are, there's, there's often an element of false advertising sometimes. But I remember, like back in the day, you know, like Drew Struzan is a really ob- obvious one in the '80s. Those kind of like '80s brilliantly made sort of movies that were that, that, that he sort of his posters kind of. They sort of summed up the, the what you imagined the movie might be, you know, um, um, and um, and more, you know, and and, and to me, a, a good design is sort of that. It's like sort of trying to sort of bottle the magic of, of 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 the of the thing you're trying to portray and extrapolate and make it interesting and striking and everything else. And you know, it's it's. Um, yeah, it's it's uh, I, it's one of my favorite favorite elements of it. To be honest, I, I like often when I do, when I do a little thumbnail or a little sketch, I think when it's done there, like I don't really want to have to sort of make yeah, this and, 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 and render it. Definitely, it's definitely like right. Okay, I'm really happy with this, and so now it's just the process of gradually making it worse, making it worse. <laughs> it's yeah. Finished, yeah, 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 yeah. Too too many times, you know. Um, the little sketch just is it's done. It's done. There yeah. it is. That that that's 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 my concept there that's yeah. it it's done and then and then you have to make this this thing and, and, and like Ollie says it's often it gets worse from there <laughs> <laughs> there's uh, there's some people just saying about a lagging issue if what we'll do is we'll review the video afterwards but we are recording this on OBS so if there was a, and people can hear it fine but there's a bit of a video glitch I do wonder if it's because Ollie's video quality is just so good it's beautiful so oh, crisp it's yeah. so crisp. The crisp and um, smooth. Does that mean? Does that mean it's just a, it's just 1080p? It shouldn't be shouldn't be crazy. No. What we'll what we'll do is what we'll do is if there is a lagging issue, we are recording this. So if the, if there was, it, we can always upload an additional version. That's what I was going to say. Um, so uh, so when you approach a a piece uh, uh, compositionally, is it? Are you pen and paper? Go- oh, I say I will see no. Jock is a very famous pen, pen and paper guy, but so but, in, right now. <laughs> but uh, when you actually a- approach the design of a new a new piece, is it straight to the computer? Is it all in your mind? Is it is it is it? I need to I need to get onto the computer. We've had a lot of different responses to this question over the over the over the convention. Yeah, um, for, for me, it's usually it starts off as it's pretty rare that I go in without any sort of ideas. I'll have like a visual, I have like a idea of what I want to do, but um, then it's straight to the computer for me. I find, especially at the compositional stage, it's so important for me to be able to just like grab things around and move them around, almost like a collage, right? Like like you're moving pieces of paper around on a desk, you're just like gradually making tweaks and nudging things over and just finding that like balance in the composition. I find to be much, much, much easier on the computer than it is just into a sketchbook, um, just because you can edit. So you can edit and undo and and transform and move things around so so simply. And use use photographs, use other bits of artwork you find lying around, just like slam them all in and see what see what works uh, and what sort of enhances your idea. Yeah, same for me. Actually, um, I find so for some comic stuff, I do still you know noodle with a pen, but actually, you know particularly for posters it's I, I i sit at my mac and i just just pull stuff in and try and figure it out um because yeah like it's just so easy uh, easily editable you can just move stuff around really quickly yeah. and when you do a drawing like you know there's there's different different you can get different you can be surprised in a different way when you do a physical drawing for sure you know you can kind of figure it out but 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 it's always once you've sort of drawn the line it's there and and particularly for posters i feel like it's important it's such a uh, you know, I never stop tweaking until I send off the final file. You're always just moving just elements around, just slightly changing, like letting you breathe a little bit more here or pushing it in here or tightening here, you know, tightening little elements here, whatever it is. I, fi- I find I find the Macs really and Photoshop really kind of uh, 
useful to make that that element of the whole kind of process easier and kind of more you know um adaptable i i guess you know mm. but but i but i do you know i come from basically drawing on paper um so yeah that element is always there and certainly in the final art i still tend to tend to do that but um yeah i you know design i feel like composition design is is it's so fluid really and and that's mm. that's the you know you're trying to sort of like just grab something that just hits and works out of, sort of nowhere essentially and that's such a fluid process that I find when something that's e easily editable and, mo and move it, you know, you can just play around with it. You, you're, you're more likely to, to, to surprise yourself and then just get mm -hmm. a, a little kind of, you know, just the elements sit in a certain way. And, oh, it, it just, yeah. you know, I, I've, sort of, I've sort of learned long ago just to trust my instincts on it, you know, not think, mm -hmm. not overthink it. I think it's easy to think things should look a certain way, but actually I've found, you know, for me, it's the it's the accidents and the more unusual and happy accidents that happen that excite me way more, and they're often the ones that just work better, and then people respond to because they're immediate and they're, and they're they're just they mm. they feel they feel better. That seems to be the the way it goes. So, yeah, the mm. Mac's really really useful for that. You know, just uh, keeps uh, it similar th similar thing. I've started um, doing a lot more three D as as part of the sketch phase, and that's great because you can start with your composition with your sketch, and you'd be like, right, this is roughly what I want it to look like, and then I'll take it into 3D and build it and light it there, like as a rough base pass. But in that phase, there's often like, oh, if I move the camera just like a little bit this way, or I twist it this way, or like move the lights in a different way, you just find th like different things that you didn't expect or intend. Yeah. Um, and actually like work really, really well, or better than your original yeah. idea, which is nice. <laughs> and, and, and also for me, that, that's the most inspiring stuff. When, when you get a little surprise, you've almost sort of surprised yourself. You know, someone's like playing a sort of instrument and you play a little, you play something that sort of surprises mm -hmm. yourself. That's often the stuff that, that feels best and, and is yeah. the most interesting to you, you know, and tends to kind of work the best, I think. Mm. There's a, uh, Matt Ferguson was talking about how he, he goes, he's sort of straight to the Mac kind of uh, person, but there are certain posts. He, he sees the notebook as uh, you know, pen and pen to paper as the last res for him the last resort because he's like, I need to because he, he believes in the sort of the, the you know making things work on a postage stamp sort of size. Yeah, in yeah. Terms of the which, which is a great. That's, that's a yeah. Ollie mentioned that is if you yeah if, you, if it works this big, it's going to look even better this big kind of thing you know, or at least it will it will stick you know yeah. something that sometimes works this big. If you reduce it down, it doesn't always work in the same way, and you can mm -hmm. kind of say, "Oh, well, but it's supposed to be this big." It's like, no, no, you, you know, you've lost it at yeah. that point. The, the point is, it needs to be solid you know, from the from the get go. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. So, um. Sorry, I drew a blank there. <laughs> um. So, uh, Ben, if you in terms of as because obviously your audio cut out, so uh, yeah, I hope it's working the composition, now. Composition, it is working now. Um, yeah, and uh, we did the composition talk there to to sort of to sort of cover <laughs> cover you. Uh, before yeah. you could so that you because the introduction to how you know these guys and 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 whatnot is uh, would is 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 a story worth telling probably. Uh, for, well, even though we told it before, I think we did tell extent. it before. It's, it's funny we both met. We all met the same day, whether they realise that or not. Did we? Um, yeah, football bubble twenty thirteen. Wow, I did uh, not. It, yeah, yeah, you were all there with Mondo and Justin Ishmael and Mike and Kemp Tom. And oh man, I think a few other people. That was my first MondoCon, uh, my first Thought Bubble, and um, yeah, I turned up as a fan and oh. uh, tried. But was to that was that what, what, was that we were in that weird sort of unmade building and we we're in a mm. long line. Yeah, you were all sort of down oh, one yeah, end yeah. in a line, and um, Drew um, was there. Drew, Drew Millwood as well was on the end. Yeah, and um, nice. I think Ollie had his Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah, yeah, that was. Yeah, yeah that was. Uh, I think that, that was, was the like, year when you brought everything. Yeah, that was the, the year, all yeah. time of stuff, and I think Kate Beaton was there as well. Uh, right. Yeah, and it was Matt Ferguson was there as well yeah. with, with a tiny little table in a corner, not selling much. <laughs> yeah it was um yeah and it's just developed from there it was a lot of pestering of people like pestering job and i think i followed you to a comic shop as well and, yeah. uh, Did you? back back here back at home came to nash again and said oh, you yeah, really yeah. would like me to ship your stuff 
<laughs> and uh, pestered Ollie a lot. And uh, well, it was a sort of a every now and then email for three years or something. <laughs> so, well, the, the value of persistence, I guess. Yeah, apparently but, so. Yeah, well, but, but, you know, all, all joking aside, apart from the lovely sunlight reflecting on the frame in my shot, look at that. It's, um, it's pretty yeah. awesome. It's gonna as soon as the sun moves like gently, out, yeah, you've it's gonna got go. You appreciate it now while you still have it. But um, yeah, you're very, you're very aside, dramatic. Ben's been like, insta- I, I could not have carried on doing this if, if it wasn't for Ben because I, I tried shipping my own sort of first couple of posters. I think I, we, I, Ollie's mentioned like his mum helped him the first few times, and, and it's, yeah. it's 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 hellish, you know, it's, and. Poster fans are very particular about it being very particular as well, and I wanted to like make sure that was all okay. And Ben yeah, I mean, <laughs> just, 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 just off, offered that, and and has been awesome to be yeah, honest. I mean, ultimately, all, all you're shipping a, a piece of paper across the world and expecting like no damage or wrinkles yeah. or like yeah. or anything. <laughs> so, so it's a pretty exacting. Uh, yeah, Ben's fucking awesome at it. So we've yeah, got, yeah. Uh, we've got so plans. Far, right? We've got plans for a. Uh, a but well, we had plans last year. Unfortunately, COVID hasn't really uh, allowed it to, to continue yet. But we want to do a, a video a, a video of uh, print rolling with Bembo, um, yep. uh, and uh, or, or rather a do's and don'ts. Uh, well, it's not necessarily. Yeah, the problem is it will be wrong for a lot of people. And there's no perfect way. I get people emailing me saying, "Why don't you do it like this? And you should have longer craft paper. And this isn't tape right." And, <laughs> and um, I mean, ideally, I think people would like me to spend about half an hour on every print I roll from the back, which would be completely yeah, ridiculous. And, you know, there are some compromises I make, but it's not been too bad, I think. Jock, we've shipped quite a lot. I've shipped about 4,000 tubes in the last year. I mean, and I haven't yeah. had many damages. Oh, that's awesome. 3,865 damages. It's not that bad. <laughs> <laughs> you should see my DHL claim. Yeah. Someone said in the comments that uh, that we should be showing the names. The reason we haven't is because Ollie's got his email address as his uh, as his Zoom name, so we don't want to show that. <laughs> oh, okay. It's, um, it's right. Can I change that? Yeah, I think it's my work probably. email. It's my work yeah, email so address. Saying, I don't think someone gonna... should na- na- label the screen. We would, but I mean, if somebody it... really wanted to like guess my work email address, I'm pretty sure that's what it would be. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. That's so just, it's, uh, you know, I'm a stickler for the GDPR. Um, that's true. <laughs> so, um, well, uh, when you sort of uh, approach, uh, if we can go to posters and, and talk about when you, in your creative process, do you often come up with multiple concepts or, or do you sort of wait for that singular amazing vision and then yeah. just plow on with that? I mean, if it, if it depends on the client, right? Because like certain people are just going to want to see they're like when, when I was doing a Broadway stuff, um, they would, they just expect to see like 10 ideas or like six, six to 10 ideas or whatever. And, and that's fine. But like, if I'm doing Mondo or where, where it's more about like, what do you want to do? Then I only, I just pick my favorite because the, the problem with doing six to 10 ideas is that you always have a favorite and they'll always pick the shittest one <laughs> like it's just, it's just <laughs> yeah. like every single time they'll just pick the boring one i'm like oh all right okay well uh, so i mean i just got to the point where i was like just don't put anything in the in the pitch that you wouldn't be really happy about doing yeah which ultimately for me means there's usually just one and i'll, I'll try and just do that one if i if i can jock is that yeah. for you yes yeah, similarly really you know it's this although you know i've not done so much for Mondo in the last couple of years. Um, the lovely thing about it is there's a bit of a trust there and, and, and uh, you know, I tend to sort of come up with it. At this point, it's more of a sort of an, if I have an idea for something, then I'll say, hey, could I do this for this? And they'll go, oh yeah, that's great or, or not, you know, whatever whatever it might be. But um, um, yeah, there's probably, probably in the past, I'm sure I came up with a few, but maybe just two or three, you know, but um, there is normally that one that, that is, you know, I think what we all love about, about, posters is um that um particularly the you know mondo and, and and the world that we're talking about is that it does allow you just 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 to just to have that that more interesting idea that more kind of you know just a different take on it that you that, that maybe that, you know if you're working for a studio or something you might not be able to do in quite the same way though i think that is changing mm. more and more but still 
you know, certainly here you know, five, ten years ago, it, it was more about the kind of a, a slightly different take on it, and that was that was really exciting. And then, and, and you know, um, you know, te- it tended to be I'd find there just be sort of a thing that I wanted to do for that film, and and, yeah. and luckily we have Mondo that would go, yeah, that's great, go for it, you know, and 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 then you kind of build on that and you keep it going and you you know, surprise yourself with sort of little ideas or little things that kind of spark an idea from somewhere else. You know, you know what I mean? It's like, it, it was pretty organic and, 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 and it's, it's always really lovely. I've, I, I've always really appreciated how, you know, in, in what I've done that I've been able to sort of indulge myself basically, you know, in a, in a really nice way, you know, not in a self-indulgent way, but I've been able, I've been, I've been able to just, um, you know, follow what I thought I should be doing, or, or what I thought looked looked good, or what I, what excited me, and I, and I've luckily found places that I could put that, you know, and, and people would sort of publish it or whatever it might be, you know. So um, that's really, I think, you know, the magic of 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 of, of post of the poster community and everything is that it's it's uh, you know it sort of allows that that little that little kind of um, I'm getting close to like speaking like I'm on a Disney kind of like you know the magic of posters, yeah. but you know, <laughs> but, you know, but, you know but, but, but but it's kind of true. It's like it's, it's you know I, I, I love things in the world that let people indulge themselves in a really nice way and then do the thing that, that they want to put out and, and say, well, this is what I think this should be like, you know. And, yeah, it's and, also and, like I, I feel like with Mondo, especially, there was always an opportunity to kind of like push yourself out of your comfort zone a little bit as well. Yeah, it's, it's not just like let's do the same thing I did for this, but for this, it's like it, which yeah. Is, when a client comes to you for like uh, an actual movie poster or a Broadway thing, they usually have a really specific thing in mind of what they want, which is we love this work that you did for this guy. Can you do the same for us? You know, and that's like yeah. really lame. <laughs> it's a, yeah. I mean, it's, it's fine for them. It's just a boring pra- design practice. But with Mondo, there's like, an, like a blank slate. There's no expectations. And you can kind of like, oh, I've been meaning to try something a bit like this. I wonder if I could have a go at that for this movie. Yeah. I mean, that's that's oh, really yeah. fun. That's a great, a great space to like, um, yeah. to push yourself in as well. You mentioned, bro- uh, I, I was going to get on to uh, influences in a minute, but just because you mentioned Broadway, um, mm-hmm. I was talking to Ben only a few hours ago about, um, about uh, yeah. I, my appreciation of the fact that you've covered uh, sort of, art for musicals because it's within this hobby musicals era and 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 stage stuff is is not necessarily well served um and Mm. uh, so i I guess it was just a question as to what what you so do you have an affection for uh theater and 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 musicals i i do i'm not like i'm not like a huge musical buff i do enjoy the i and it was a pretty recent thing for me uh an ex-girlfriend took me to um Les Mis, and I was like, oh, oh, and I was just completely like charmed by it. I fucking loved it. I loved it so much. Uh, and I, I like that. I like the, the theatricality of it. I like that um, there's a really rich history. And like, besides the fact that I enjoy like, like going to the theatre and seeing live performances, like I, there's a really great rich history of artwork on Broadway and West End um, for those productions. And I, I think the fact that not only are they is the artwork like tend to be pretty iconic you just see it forever like everybody knows what like the phantom of the opera poster or yeah it's because they're just yeah. stuck on buses in london for like 20 years you know there's a really really amazingly like rich history and it just sticks around forever so that was really cool to like get to briefly be a part of that uh, and that's if I, if I go back into doing posters um which I probably which i'd like to at some point uh I, that's the sort of thing that i i think i'd like to be doing like stuff for new productions and um and uh and like particularly maybe not the movie industry but that's sort of awesome um, hey gareth have you seen the chat room? i've just seen it's only only because i noticed the chat and and i've got someone uh, and i've got key who who runs our tech uh nudging me that we've got a uh we've got matt taylor asking is there room for one more yeah uh, and- no no, Sorry, no, no. <laughs> he had his chance. But actually, but, it won't fit with the uh, the. This layer. is what I was saying. We were about to say is that uh, is that is that we well we could do a, a one screen. It's just about giving Ollie an option a, a chance to change his uh, Zoom name if he wishes. Um, I could log back out and log back in, uh, which would absolutely work because I have just changed it. I just think I yeah, need try to that. Out and log back in. Okay, so we'll bring in uh, Matt Taylor. All right, I'll be I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Layer four oh, has entered the chat. Come on. Hey, Matt. Hello, mate. Hi, guys. Hey, buddy. Nice to see you. We kicked Ollie out for you. Oh, no. He's coming back. No, no, no. Shit, no. I got rid of Ollie. Back. He's coming back. Yeah. It was about him. It's a, because uh, we've got an open window now of just one single window. Here, we Here he comes. And we didn't want to there expose Ollie's email address. That's all it is. That's, that's, is that working now? Is yeah. that better? Great. We're all here. Um, Matt, welcome. It's great to have you. All right. Hey. Sorry, I'm late. Matt, your place, looks, your place looks awesome. I love that Heather's poster. Mm. Oh, That's it's exactly so good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it arrived yesterday, so um, I had to put it straight in the, the picture frame there. I've been moving around my house for the last half an hour trying to find a spot where there's not too much sunlight, and this is <laughs> yeah. about the only bit that's not, like, blazing bright at the moment. Um, but, yeah, mm. thank you. It's a, it's a you good one. well. It looks lovely. Thank Let's you. Um, I was actually late because I ate too many marshmallows. <laughs> I... <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's classic, classic mistake, right? It's, well, I mean, it's, vin, it's vintage Matt Taylor. Vintage Matt Taylor right there. Yeah. Too many marshmallows. It's like, mind. where the fuck is Matt? It's like, oh, he's on the marshmallows again. Yeah, well, I, was, <laughs> I was reminded of the existence of marshmallows through a thing in the chat room. Someone mentioned them and it made me think, oh, shit, I've got a bag of marshmallows in the cupboard. So I went and ate some. Um, they're like the, the giant ones. And one didn't seem like enough. And two was too many. Oh, and uh, I had to... Wow. I had to have a little break. <laughs> it, lo it looks like you've stuck them in your ears as well. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, I ate too much. It's coming yeah, out. Yeah, it's just like... <laughs> um, Sorry, I've interrupted something. Please just... just no, yeah, so, yeah. Uh, we, 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 we've, we've just been there. talking about composition, Matt. It's been very... Uh, it's been thrilling. I was oh. just going to... I, I was going <laughs> to throw that question out to Matt because I thought when... when uh, Ben had said, I think I can get these people on, on the chat. And I was like, well, given that I really want to do composition, having these those three artists in particular, that would be quite a, 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 an amazing mix. Uh, because I think your ability... I said it was such bravado as well, not thinking it would actually happen. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. It was, oh, it was ballsy. Guys, yeah. And yet mm. here we are. Um, Matt, your ability to... I think one of the things in terms of composition, and why, what, one of the great things about your work is your ability to balance a lot of faces and a lot of and a, and a lot of uh, and, a, and a lot of elements in a way that 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 is um, that is that has a comfortable comfortable that is comfortable and that it, and that can be and that can be read and understood and appreciated uh, because it must be a challenge. So when you go to when you go to create a piece. And you've got that task of I want these characters to be shown. Obviously, the Marvel series is a great example because you know that fans want to see faces uh, and 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 spaceships and and all. And that, that. grew to a crescendo as the uh, series as well. <laughs> more and more people, but then... yeah. Uh, how do you go about it? Um, I wish I had like a an eloquent way of describing it but normally it's just chuck stuff on the page and then move it around until it till it works basically like it's it's not really it's not really any more complicated than that like there there are pieces that i've worked on in the past where it's been all about building a a composition which is trying to communicate like a theme or trying to communicate like the story or it's trying to say something but with those big multi-character posters it's basically how can i get everything on here in a way that looks pleasing and you can sort of see everything um they're actually kind of easier i'd say than like something like say my palm springs poster which did last year it's just got like andy sandberg and christine mm -hmm. melotti on it and but i wanted to say something about the story you know and to try and allude to what was happening in it without spoiling it so that was like a challenge um and that was something which i ended up doing like 10 different sketches for which i rarely do these days normally it's i have an idea and i draw it but something like say infinity war it's just i had a like a laundry list of characters that had to go on there and it's just it's just a case of kind of placing them and trying to get them to um sort of balance there's no better way to describe it than that you you know when it works um and then you send in a sketch and someone reminds you that you forgot to put valkyrie on there or you can't have loki and so you take that off and it doesn't balance and you have to move shit around again and oh we'll add curse on this too late uh, motherfucker. okay right had, so we, have, have to so we have during the convention had worse than that and that was down to Great. sunny from we buy your kids so yeah of course ahead. yeah um yeah it's just you just move shit around until it until it feels right so 
yeah i wish i wish i could say it was more um there was a there's a better reason a better description than that but it's just yeah. you know i've been doing this for so long now i sort of just i just do it it's like when people say you know how do you make your art it's like i don't know i just i sit down and draw it i can't really describe it any better than that it's just yeah, sure. the cumulative effect of where i'm at now right and like some movies they don't really like I, Infinity War or Endgame like don't really call for a really like nice distilled a new, a new like, that movie is just nah. stuff. It's like stuff <laughs> yeah. happening everywhere all the time. And like yeah. trying to rein in some of that chaos is like it's really oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah, well the thing was like the the first when I first started putting the sketch together, like my brain was going, Why don't you have the whole thing be like crystals and then each shard of the crystal is like a different hero and also the crystals are the same colour as the infinity gems? And they're like shaded in those colors as well. And then I realized it was an absolute fucking nightmare. There was no way I was ever going to, I was ever going to be able to do that. So I just thought, fuck it, I'll put a big circle in the middle. Like I usually do put the villain at the back and then just yeah. sort of slot everything in and order of importance. So, you know, cap at the front, Iron Man, Thor. And then as they go sort of out towards the edges, they get sort of less important until you get all the way up to Hawkeye. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you, really you can have some composition. Yeah. Just put, put it in a circle. It's yeah. It's like makes it easy, makes everything easy. I, I, I feel bad for the actors that played the people that they were just saying, like, as they get less important, they just get make them smaller and put them out of the edge of the circle. Like, you know, poor who, who, who's like, who, who was on the edge, Matt? Who was on the edge of your, <laughs> you know, who was on the edge, Jasper fucking yeah. Sitwell. And I had to take him out because he was the one character they didn't have likeness rights for. because, oh, because he was. Putting up too much of a fuss, even though he was like C list. I'm sorry, yeah. Casper, if you're watching this, is terrible. This is live. It's public. We <laughs> should not be talking about this. <laughs> I was, I was so happy when I, because I, I was trying to fit everyone in there. You know, it was, um, yeah, there's a little Tilda Swinson in there, and I was really happy with my Peggy Carter. And oh. I thought, yeah, let's put Jasper Sitwell in there because he has a kind of crucial role in it. And and then they sent it back, and it was like, no, nah, you can't, you can't have him in there. <laughs> I was just I just had to look up who Jasper Sitwell was and I was like, yeah. that guy? So, <laughs> Ollie, 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 I know. I called him Casper, so we're we're in good shape. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um I wondered if I might talk about or might ask about um obviously you guys are the, the, the create you bring a lot of creativity to the to the game and but in terms of also like inspiration and the role of inspiration in being creative and who your and who your inspirations are it would be great i think to hear that um because i think uh you know within the post within the sort of alternative movie poster world you know it's it's a, that as a hobby and, and as a culture and, and stuff has existed for you know since you know what 10 15 years something like that um mm. But uh, but it draws from all sorts of things, and so I'd just be great to hear from you guys what what inf- what influences you take, obviously from, from everything and everything around you, I'm sure. But in terms of designers and artists and and, and mm. that sort of thing, it would be good to hear from you guys uh, that and the role it has in when you're actually creating stuff. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it changes all the time. Um, I, I think it's the same for everybody, right? That your influences change, like depending yeah. on what you're exposed to, and then your work changes as a result of like finding new things that are inspiring you. I mean, to begin with, like when I started doing um, Amondo poster stuff, it was like it, I think my influences would probably be really obvious if you looked at them. It was like Saul Bass, um, Dan McCarthy, like Shigeo Fukuda. Um, uh and it's just it's all there i i I don't i'm not um a person that believes in like pure originality i think that creativity at least for me has always been about synthesizing a bunch of stuff that doesn't necessarily traditionally sit together and creating something that feels like new and familiar at the same time um and then more recently, it's been, as I've moved away from that, it's been like uh, other concept artists, like painters, and more recently, photographers as well, um, like uh, Henri Cartier-Bresson, like classic street photographers. Um, there's something about, on the theme of composition, there's something about people who can create a composition out of something that's like happening live in front of them and like kind of reigning in that chaos with a, the with a camera is, is really inspiring to me, like currently right now. Um, but yeah, that's that's sort of where where I'm at. I don't know where everyone else is. 
Yeah, uh, your, uh, I think I said to you the other day, your your Instagram feed is a, is a joy at the moment. Like your s- shots from Hawaii that, that were exactly that, just like little moments and oh, but so those nice. broad design That's sense good, and good. and and a, you know a compositional kind of quality that is. Just lovely, Ollie. Just Thanks, lovely. man. <laughs> me, and my, no, me and my private Instagram that no one can see. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, the only Josh. private one. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> Ollie Moss after dark. Um, no, the, the, you're, you've, yeah, you've opened up a new sort of photography uh, uh, Instagram account, and there's some really oh. nice uh, uh, shots in that. Oh, cheers. I mean, it's not. It's just something that's for me. It's fun. I enjoy it. I, it's a. It's a method of um, like image creation that has nothing to do with my day-to-day job and it's just like finding the fun in that is, is really good also i think after the pandemic uh, i i really craved to make stuff that like got me out of the house and like touched reality and things that are actually happening um after being sort of so isolated for so long maybe sort of hunger to to make things that like connected with real people in the world and that's like sort of why i've got a bit more into photography recently but that's just a hobby that's just for fun I could get into it. If, if, do you think that that's a role that art has right now? We, we could get into that if we want, but I, I will put no question to the, the the question of of influence to uh, to Jock and to and and to uh, and to and to Matt before uh, before 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 we uh, move on to another topic. Um, um, I'm trying to think who I'm. I mean, my influences tend to be fairly well represented in the work I'm doing. So I'll get into an artist, and then I'll start trying to like lift bits from their their style and, and start folding it into my into my own work. Like um, Milton Glaser and Seymour Chwast, um, Tad Noriyuku, I discovered a few years ago, and I don't know how I discovered their work. Like it, it took me so long. Um, in fact, no, I discovered their work via Paul Pope's Instagram feed, and Paul is another like huge, huge influence on me, whether it necessarily comes across in my work or not. Like the way that he conveys motion in, in comics is just like second to none. Um, but like, so Tad Noriyuku, when I discovered their work, I then immediately thought, oh shit, I want to do this. So like my um, Detective Pikachu poster is just like a straight rip of that. Like it's not even subtly influenced by it. It's just me trying to do that within the confines of a, um, of a, movie poster and sort of like 50 percent succeeding um but I don't know, i'm trying to think who i was poster. into when i i gifted that to oh, my brother it's a good poster yeah i mean I'm, I'm super happy with it but like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna hide the fact that i stole the sort of design <laughs> concept wholesale from another artist um it's like the palettes i use you know people always well always jesus um people sometimes mention like that they like my palettes so it's like that's great but like i just steal them from Tomonuka and um, Justin at uh, Phantom City um, and Ollie actually from time to time, you know, I, I I just tend to lift the stuff that, oh yeah, Ollie, I definitely pinched the, I think um, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi, those two palettes combined. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I, I, I mean, pulled those just, two and used them on something else. But, yeah, I just, you know, but I just like paint it a little bit and then move sliders around until I think it looks yeah. good. It's not like, <laughs> oh. I'm, not, I'm not like sitting there with my palette and be like, mm, yes, a hint of blue here is what I want. I'm just like slamming through no. the sliders going like a bit more. I don't know. Eh, yeah, that seems good. I told you, right? You mentioned Paul Pope and I was with him in New York a couple of years ago and, and he brought up how much he loved your colours. <laughs> Yeah, he told me when I saw him in the summer. I still haven't quite got over that. <laughs> <laughs> he's great, though, isn't he? Paul, Paul, yeah, yeah. He's so good. I love his work so much. Um, it's it's the best comics, and I wish there was more of it. A present company accepted, obviously. Um, <laughs> it's it, yeah, it's the best comics, and I wish I wish he made more. I wish Battling Boy Volume Two hadn't taken. Isn't I mean I can't remember when that came out. Two thousand thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, it's been a while. But, yeah. Oh, geez. Comics um, are hard, Matt. Well, you know, yeah, how are you going to bring out another comic, Matt? <laughs> Fourth of never. I remember when I started working on Wolf and I was I somehow thought I was going to be able to draw it in between all my commercial jobs. And I think, Jock, I remember you had a good old laugh at that. <laughs> and I said, I've got a I said, In fact, bought another one of these. Oh, yeah. One That's so good. I was yeah. actually, Matt, I, I was, I, I remember seeing that uh, a thought bubble for you and, and I was just like, Jesus Christ! This is your first comic. It, it, it looks super good, like super, super good. But I'd love to see more. Have I over the years given me both? Of you gave me one sterling piece of advice, which I didn't listen to, and I'm very grateful that you never said I told you so, Ollie. It was when I started work. At I love dust, 
and you told me I was going to hate it. And I said, no, I'm going to love it. It's going to be great. You're like, it'll be brilliant. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it wasn't. I hated it. Um, and Jock, when I started drawing my comic and I said, no, it'd be fine. I can do it around just having had a baby and all my other work. And you said, no, you won't. And I was like, no, it'll be fine. And, and neither of you have in the years since said, told you so. I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> Um, we've got, uh, uh, please, if people have, have got questions, I know they have been submitting some, but, uh, but wanted to There's give lots of chat some, going on, yeah. some, uh, some time to, uh, to, to submit now as, um, as we've gotten past, um, the lag issues that lots of comments with pe- people were commenting about. Um, is it okay now? Is it all right? fine now? Is it's absolutely okay? fine now is, is my oh, understanding. So, uh, so is it my email, was it my email address that was just like, <laughs> 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 That was the pinch. That was, yeah. Um, uh, so Joel Woodford says, uh, so far when we were talking about uh, composition and how you go, and your approach to art uh, to the piece, it says, um, so far all artists have said that they go straight into an idea on the computer and play with layouts until it works. But has it always been that way for each of you, or is that the result of experience? Um, for me, sorry, go ahead, John. I don't know. So again, I was just going to say, from because I, I started drawing in comics in the year two thousand. I know I'm really old. The year two thousand, uh, yeah, like, like yeah. Um, <laughs> so I was my first cover sketches. I was I was sending by fax, which, by the way, if no one's ever done that, it's the best. Sending a sending a sketch by fax is beautiful. You put like a hand drawn pencil drawing through this machine that just goes and they get it in America. Like, you know, the, it's, it was, it was ace. And there's something really lo-fi and, 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 re- and nice about that. Actually talking about what we were saying earlier before Matt got here, how if you can make it work, you know, in a really, and I guess a fax is like a almost like a really low res version of the actual thing you're trying to represent. Mm. But if it works like that, there's, you know what I mean? There's, there's, there's a, there's a pat, there's something good about that, I think. So, um, so yeah, no, I, I, I was, I was getting pub- published before I, I even had a Mac. And, um, and in fact, my first, um, my first Photoshop job was the losers number one, which is a series I did for DC vertigo. Um, it was the cover to losers number one. Um, and so I learned in print every month, you know, on, on, on display. And it was great because I had a really supportive editor, Will Dennis, and I got to play around, like we were talking about earlier, I got to play around with design ideas and moving the logo around, which DC were not up to that point really up for you doing. But we just hit a, a, a sweet spot where Will said, it's fine, just, just do, just go for it, do what you want. Um, but I learned, in, you know, I almost like learned, what's the, what's the phrase for like just being thrown in the deep end? You know, is that mm. I was, I, literally my first uh photoshop job was the losers number one and and um there is um so no you know for me it, it was not always digital but there's something about photoshop or or similar um programs or apps um that uh, it just, it, yeah, it just makes it, it, it just frees you up. And, and, you know, I, cause I, I used to paint as well before doing black and white, before doing digital color. I, and so much of my sort of, um, concern was about what layers of paint would do to each other. And I'm going to put this wash here and put a bit of opaque paint here. And then you get Photoshop and you can do all that so easily. And then you really hone in, in on, 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 on what, what you were trying to do. Whereas before, mm. before you were sort of, you were constrained by the sort of physicality of paint or ink or whatever it is you were working with. Um, and that can take a lot of time and energy. There's something about Photoshop. It really focuses on like what you're actually trying to do with this. And, and that was a really useful thing for me. You know, like I'd spent so long honing painting and mark making and texture. And then I had Photoshop that, that I could just do all that, you know, much more simply. And then it's like, okay, what am I doing with it? What's the point of this? And, and I, I find that really, really easy. So that's a really, lo- not easy, so really useful, sorry. But I was going to say that's a really long-winded way of, so long-winded way around of saying, um, no, it wasn't always digital, but it is now. <laughs> do, you, do, you find that, uh, do you find that takes something away from, from it in the long term? Do you think you'll find yourself going back and maybe – trying to do it the harder way with actual paint and blending. Yeah, yeah, well, and yeah. So, yeah, that's a really good question because there is, there is 
there's something magic about i mean yeah as you i'm sure you all know i love drawing with ink and making a mess and mark making with ink phys physically and that that will always surprise you in a way that photoshop never will but photoshop surprises me in a different way you know and, and you can just flip a layer and change the you know the, the you know change the hard light and suddenly it might like bring out an element of the layer that you didn't realize was there and it will surprise you in, in just yeah. the same way so it's you know I, I i i don't think of them as separate i don't think of them as like digital and, and analog and do you do it digitally or do you do it but you know it's just it's just the set it's all just the same you know mix really the same soup and um but but yeah ben to answer your question is that yeah no th there's there is something really great in just having a pen and just doing it by you hand miss but, that yeah. challenge um no because i've still got it over there i've got my drawing board yeah any time it's fine it's fine <laughs> <laughs> it's it's um what raises is a friend of mine in Totnes actually um who right. uh, I bumped into the other day and he's really gone back to painting with oils as yeah. something that he lost from when he was younger and he yeah. was uh, constantly working on the computer and he's just gone I can't believe I sort of forgot about this and yeah yeah I mean there, there is the element and... there there is the element for me that I didn't necessarily get into this years ago to be sat in front of a screen you know I, I like the physicality of it I like painting I like ink I like the mess I like the the mistakes and the you know the organic nature of all that but mm. I also get to use the Mac as well and I love it all now you know it's, it's so I, I don't really think of it as one of the one or the other you know it's all just tools in a toolbox you yeah, use whichever yeah. tool is the most effective for the job exactly yeah, yeah. We had uh, um, Matt, Matt Ferguson says, I didn't meet you at that time, but this is a great watch. He did also <laughs> reveal to us, he did reveal to us uh, that his favourite poster by another artist is Evil Dead by Oli Moss. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, uh, I would like to say Ollie, how much uh, I like it, your uh, Empire Strikes Back poster because I think it fucking slaps. Uh, Sorry, Ed, but... John Moragaya said he's got your Lady Miz up on his wall yeah. by his desk. Oh, brilliant. Um, Muragaya, <laughs> there's some Muragaya there. You should check him out. Yeah, He's amazing if you haven't. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, I love that. I love that piece behind you. You've got, got some good... Everyone's got good art on their walls. Um, and I, I think I mentioned this. I do have some. It's just I've managed to point the camera in such a way <laughs> that I avoided all of it. You've just made you yourself look cool AF, uh, basically. People have been saying you look like sort of 80s era Tom Cruise, like cocktail or something. Yeah. Fuck yeah, that's that's brilliant. Love that. Thank you. More of those compliments, please. Yeah, I was gonna say I, <laughs> I missed a bit of this chat because I was uh, my daughter's rang because it was bedtime there when I say goodnight. But um have we addressed how handsome Ollie's looking right now? Like I haven't seen <laughs> no, it's like, like dude, come on, I haven't seen you since whew. like Mondo Con in twenty seventeen, I think. So it must be like oh, man, four years have, or yeah, so. Long, so long man, dude, American living's man. like doing you good, man. <laughs> Matt, Matt be, 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 before we, we went live, uh, I said, like, what have you been doing? You, you look terrific. And he's like, I've stopped drinking. And I was like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I've stopped drinking as well, but only because I've been having a very bad week. And I, I kind of felt like booze might be a, a slippery downhill slope. So I have yeah. not had any booze for two weeks. And it's been awful. And fresh. Yeah. It's, yeah. <laughs> All that really is much. It's very hard. You know beginning. what? I'm wearing jeans today that I haven't worn for about six months because I, I kind of put on a bit of weight over the pandemic, as I guess everyone has. Um, and it turns out that just not Ollie. Not Ollie. Ollie. no <laughs> fucking not Ollie. I think uh, everyone went in a different. Everyone like one or the other. It's you, you can't. Nobody stayed the same. Yeah, but it turns out if you don't drink for two weeks and you kind of only eat sporadically because you're sad, um, you lose loads of weight and it's great. So I've put on my favourite old jeans today, which is really nice. Congrats, man! Oh, oh, enough, so. Yeah. Um, uh, Carly... I've got no excuse because I gave up drinking 15 years ago, but <laughs> although I am still drinking beer, so just no, uh, no alcohol. So maybe that's Car... the, the thing I'm doing wrong. Carly draws, uh, she, Carly, uh, AF, she's, an, she's amazing. She's, uh, she, uh, she's said, really love your colors, Matt. What is your approach when you are deciding on those? And that's then a question that I can build out to, to, to the rest of you on, on color. But, uh, if we start with Matt. I can answer really quickly. Um, I get orange and teal and pink, and then I use variations of those repeatedly, and somehow nobody ever notices. Nice. Do you wear those colours often, or is it? Just uh, you know what? Sometimes I do just buy a shirt that was that's got most of those colours on. So maybe I'll I'll wear that after Thought Bubble this year, and I can look like one of my prints. Sick. 
Uh, and then go, so uh, Ollie, Jock, uh, when, when it comes to colour, what, what's your sort of process in, deci- in deciding? Uh, it, ch- it changes all the time, uh, to be honest. I mean, I think usually I will start in grayscale and then colorize it a little bit and try like uh, there's a gradient map feature in Photoshop where you can choose like lights this color and uh, darks this color and anything in between you can so and that like Jock was saying is something that can create happy accidents that you didn't know um, I usually I, I don't tend to like pick from places I, I don't tend to pick sources I try and like that's a part that I that's one of the parts that I really enjoy figuring out myself and a lot of the time it's just experimentation like picking complementary colors, like what if I, like, you know, this whole thing is sort of yellowy orange. What if I stick a bit of blue in this corner? Is that going to like make it pop or like draw the eye in the direction that I want it to? Or is it just going to be like distracting? Um, So colors are a thing for me that is really just about experimentation and like figuring out um, where I want um, or, or like what is going to work with a composition that usually I've started in grayscale and like, how do I, how do I bring like richness to this um, and enhance it rather than like distract from the overall composition. And then when you're doing something a bit more minimalist, uh, what's your, is, is, just make it red. Just make it red. I wasn't gonna say. I wasn't gonna say. Because you, because you you try in every color and you're like, well, I mean, if it's just like black, white and a color, you'll go, Mm. Red is, it blue? is it blue is it blue <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all right in blue but what if i make it sort of red oh it's just better isn't it okay ready well, orange ready yeah ready orange, orange. Burnt, exactly burnt umber. i feel you there i feel like pretty much every job is just a very long circuitous route to doing the thing that i always do yeah like you try you try all the i'm gonna put some maybe like green and yellow and maybe just a bit of orange yeah. oh definitely and and some pink yeah. yeah now now i now i feel safe now that's there nice okay. yeah there's nothing wrong with with red red make red paint makes uh cars go faster right um yeah. we've got uh eric garza is in the house just oh now. hey hey, um, hey eric. i hope uh, that we might have uh have mondo on next year that would be great to see them um so yeah jock when you're when you're choosing color uh how i know that obviously you work a lot in in sort of black and white but you but uh, yep. you go uh, and you're doing color pieces yeah I mean um, yeah some of my comics uh, but like right, the co- comic I'm doing now I'm coloring myself so that it, it's it, it varies but um, uh, what Ollie said about about working in grayscale actually kind of I find with color um, I'm more um, I'm more interested in in values so values are, are the, are, are the the strength of of uh, either chroma in color, which is the strength of the color, or or um, the values are the, are the are the hot spots and the low spots within a composition. As we're talking about composition, you know, the, the draw your eye, and 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 you can apply different values to different elements in 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 the piece that you're making. Um, and if you can do that, if you can if you if you can do a black and white piece with like a grayscale piece of really good values, you know I feel like then the color is a much easier job because you've kind of you you've covered the the building blocks of, of the of the piece. Like if, if the values are correct, it's amazing that they're quite a subjective thing. But but I feel like you know if there's any artist watching, I just want to like just just yeah. just just get into values, just understand what values are in a piece and how they affect the eye and then how everyone looks at a, at a piece and a composition mm. that you make because they're, they're, they're so important. They're so important to a good drawing, to a good you know, just design, to a good composition. They're so important. So, um, and I feel like if you can make a good value piece in, in, in grayscale, then the colors, you can just kind of augment it with color, you know? Um, but, that's that's a fancy way of saying I'm. I still just make it up as I go along, and I just try different stuff. And I might have something in mind, you know, that I want to try. You know, again, depends on the piece. If it's a more you know simple piece, then I might have a more simple uh, color scheme in mind. Like you know, black, white, and red is is great. So many of my comic covers I've ended up normally the ones that don't work so well. I I, I tweak them. I, I I dutch the angle crop it a little bit and make That's, it black, white, yeah. black, white, and red. And, and it immediately looks okay. It, it, like so many, so many pieces. If like, again, another top tip for anyone watching. If, if something is, if, <laughs> is, if, if, something, is, if something is feeling 
a little bit dull, just, just dutch the angle, twist it, and yeah. zoom in with a crop, and until and, and then suddenly you've got a way more interesting piece, right? And 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 and, and if the colours aren't working, like grayscale, black, white, and red will always look, look good. This is particularly in comics, but I think posters too, as well, to a degree. But um, but yeah, no, I I still I still just play around to be honest, and I don't really. Um, sometimes I wish I, I, I had a more direct route. You know, other times. Yeah, that playing around can kind of yield ideas that you wouldn't have had. But, um, but yeah, but, you know, um, as we're talking about composition, I think, I think like values, like just check them, just understand what they are in a drawing and a composition and how they focus the eye and how you look at a piece. And, uh, you know, that's a really useful thing to think about, you know, um, uh, I, I've found. Um, I was, I was uh, talking about Paul Pope. I was at a, a, a comic convention in Brazil about four years ago, and I spent the whole weekend with um, Paul and Bill Sienkiewicz, and, and and we talked a bunch of stuff. And obviously, me and Paul were incredibly, you know, um, I mean, Bill's a Bill's a master. I, 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 how, how well known is Bill Sienkiewicz in Postable? Do you guys know who he is by chance? I mean, Gareth, have you heard of him? Maybe I not. Really yeah, maybe not. Okay. I don't know if I should, if I should know if I should know. No, 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 no. You rec- no. you'll recognise his work if you see. Yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, you'd know if you saw it. Yeah, no, you know, it's fine. There's no should. There's no never any should. If you, it's just he's you know he's a comic artist, but but his work sort of maybe transcends comics. I would say a little bit. He's done a lot of other stuff as well. Um, and we talked about a lot of this kind of stuff. We talked through the, the craft and what, how you approach and how you approach it and everything else. And, and one of the things Bill does really well, he was saying, like, for example, I'm going to, do you mind if I just in, indulge a little bit? Because this, Bill, this is Bill's words, not mine, so we can indulge, right? Mm-hmm. Um, um, yeah, he was saying, like, if he, and you'll see it in his drawings, if you check out his Twitter feed, he does, like, a lot of beautiful portraits of um like like uh, memorial portraits of people that just died he does really gorgeous drawings really you know they're really um there's a lot of life in them there's a lot of he's 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 super good and one of the things he does for example is if he draws a portrait he'll render one eye more than than another eye so that that one eye is is, is the hot spot that's the focus and he says i'll, I'll put a hot spot in a, in a piece and everything beyond that hot spot yeah, yeah. spills out uh, spills out a little bit um, and there'll still be detail in the other eye, and there'll still be details here, but, but, but there's a, and that's what, va- you know, the values come into that. Like, you know, it's not just light and dark and tone and composition and shade. It's like that you focus where you're putting the viewer's eye. And that's a really, I think, smart thing to do, you know, to, 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 to it's from, I find it's more about underst- like being able to understand what you're trying to do with the piece that you're trying to make. And then, focus those little moments those hot spots that 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 really make it come alive so um i can't remember what the question was i think it was just about color we're we're Uh, lost in your world we're just we're sort of just uh we're we're on the journey with you i think okay another guy thank you on that note another guy who does sort of a similar has a similar effect in a more sort of stripped down way is david downton whose work oh man yes that's a really that's because because actually bill and him have a there's a similarity there Mm. but i say like david does that like in spades he's so good yeah. at that he just picks the right elements to strengthen mm-hmm. and let and lets everything else just kind of yeah. just just and, and you want to like you know spill out from it it's so yeah. so good so, and, like, so talk david, about a master of composition and negative space yeah, yeah. Uh, like he's he's the guy to, to go to, to yeah so so D- david danton for those who don't know is essentially a fashion illustrator but but, but he, he does a lot of live drawings of models like in hotel rooms and stuff but if you if you google david danton fashion then you'll get some incredible he, pieces he's basically oh, yeah. engineered a like a perfect life for himself <laughs> <Where he's Yeah>. like, <laughs> right what's your job he's like well i go to a bunch of fashion shows and draw beautiful people very simply <laughs> oh, and like you no, can see his fingerprints over like so it reminds much me of illustration the, now it's it, everyone sort of after him has kind of just taken his style and kind mm. of just developed it a little bit and you could like every new fashion illustrator for a while i saw just had it's just david downton but not quite as good yeah, like, yeah exactly i was this happens a lot like the you know for me like David can draw like a motherfucker. Like he, like his ability to draw and show form in a simple way, you know, it is so good. And 
one of the things that kind of I don't want to say annoys me, but like it's just the way of the world is that people get people see the sheen of something and they try and copy the sheen of it, but that's not really what the thing is. The reason you liked David to begin with is because he can draw so so well and represent the form of it so beautifully mm. and, and so succinctly, you know. But but you almost don't realize you're seeing that. You just try and do a simple drawing, but it's never gonna, you know, it's never gonna do the same thing, you know. Be, but and um. You know, I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, check him out. He's he's one. He's amazing. It, it amazing. Reminds me of your uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, kind of the things he's done, the negative face and the, the use of the color. I'm pretty My sure. Guys, yeah, that that is better than David Downton's drawings. You're right, Ben. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I'm pretty sure David Downton's got an exhibition on in London at the moment. I know there's like a big. Oh, really? Yeah, I think. So. Oh, jeez. I'm gonna have to look on my phone. Okay, if you don't want me that, looking on yeah, yeah, talking. Yeah, yeah, go for it. There's um, this feels like it's something that should happen possibly off the talk, doesn't it? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was like, Can we go? I mean, I'd, uh, I'd love to see your stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I know that there's like a whole season of events somewhere in London, like fashion illustration. I'm sure he's doing like a master class or something like that, which oh, wow. which would be fucking amazing to go to and just like watch him draw. Um, yeah. A lot of it's going to be streamed online. I I genuinely can't remember what the name of the um event is i'm just scrolling through my feed to see if i can if i can find yeah. it and i can't but I'll, I'll look it up and, and post it somewhere but yeah it's it's definitely he's definitely involved in something that's happening like either now or soon in london so great yeah, what yeah. look there's some very kind words from joel woodford and i'm, I'm sure you, you, you may you may end up refusing it because i think you're quite uh, modest but uh, it says on a on a smaller scale i think that's what ollie did for the amp scene when talking about the influence of design um uh, about the strength of influence that you've had on 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 uh, on the poster on poster design um, within AMPs. So they, there it is. Oh, thank you. No, uh, <laughs> I, I would argue not within AMPs. Like Ollie's. I, no, I would tend to agree. <laughs> I don't want to kiss his ass. <laughs> do you remember, I, I, Ollie? Do you remember when we, we're, we're in like a bar in Austin and, and and there was some sort of like Instagram Star Wars? I can't remember what the was Star, Rise of Star, uh, Skywalker or Last Jedi, and they were just like awful animated rip-offs of, of your posters, just like, oh, Jesus. You know? Yeah, but I mean, like, you know, it, it just happens, doesn't it? You can't, it you happens. can't get, like, mad about everything. And also, I was part, like, there's a lot of that. It, it's it's easy to kind of look at influence and go, oh, yes, you are the progenitor of this thing. But, like, so many other people were doing similar stuff at the same time. We're all yeah. tied in the same way, you know. It's, it's, it's easy to, to, to try and, like, attribute cause somewhere but it's i, I think it, it's a bit more like diffuse than that we're all sort of following the same yeah thing. yeah i was no, very no. grateful for it i mean i i used to get a lot of emails from people who'd emailed ollie and uh he wasn't available or didn't reply to their emails didn't reply to the emails <laughs> I, yeah. I don't know what you're and talking I, about I, never... <laughs> I remember one job in particular where they got i got halfway through it and they were um they were kind of guiding me towards uh can you make this my simpler and like more of an optical illusion? And I, yeah, can you I just, said, can you make it shitter? <laughs> can you well, make, the thing is they kept on, it? they kept on nudging it in that direction. And I was like, okay, like you do you guys know Ollie Moss. Like he does that sort of thing. And they were like, yeah, we, we tried to get in touch with him. He didn't get back to us. And I was like, oh, that's, and I, I mentioned that you were a friend of mine and no word of a lie. The art director said, Oh, could you could you ask no. him to email us back? Oh my god, fuck off! That's awful. Um, <laughs> the, the fuck I will. Halfway through a job, you're asking me to call my I friends mean, if you can take to, the to job be, from me. To be fair, I get the same thing. I used to get when I was doing this sort of thing. I used to get the same thing with like Noma Bar. People would be like, "Oh, yeah. can you just do it like Noma would do?" And I'm like, "No." Yeah, it's the it's the chain. It kind of goes from person yeah. to person to person. Yeah, he's at the top. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, Oh, Sorry, just while while I remember, I found the I found the thing. Um, it's mm -hmm. called Drawing on Style, and it's at Cromwell Place in London from the right. <laughs> twenty. Oh, geez, sorry, I'm scrolling through the Instagram feed. This is this is bad. Where is it again? Streaming. I'm just putting uh, into my Google while we speak. It, um, it's called style. Style. Drawing. It's at the Wing Gallery. Uh, Wing, yeah, September sixteenth to the twenty sixth. Well, this is yeah, thrilling they, viewing for everyone. Thanks, guys. Yeah. For with us. We're all, well, yeah, we're all like planning our trip. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> make it a, um, a style. 20, yeah, there it is. I got it. Yeah. September, 21st of September, oh, David Downton's doing a doing a talk or a lecture, so that should yeah, be really good. Go. Great. Thank you. Um, You're welcome. There have been a few people 
you've said it. I, I intended to avoid, to an extent, this conversation. There are a few people asking what you think of coming back to the um, movie post the scenes of it. Me? Uh, yeah, yeah. People, you know, oh. people want you back. Um, oh right. Um, and it's, it's a subject that does get broached. I mean, like, I'm not saying I don't want to do it because if I. If, a, if an idea came along that I was excited about or like a process or I saw, thought something interesting when you I could do for it, then yeah, I definitely would. But right now I'm like really, really, really focused on the project I'm working on at Valve and I love that. And it's like filling all, it, it's just kind of a, completely absorbing all of my creative juices at the moment. And, I'll beat that. But it's great. Like I'm, I'm loving it. I wish I could talk about it, but I can't because I would be uh, shot. So, <laughs> um, there's a there's a question from uh, from Matt Ferguson who says, "What do you think makes good art direction?" And also, do you think it's needed, like a pair of eyes over over your work? And that sort of uh, uh, with another question, uh, yeah, I saw that earlier question. on about about collaborating with people, and I suppose yeah. in some ways it, it is a collaboration if you're working with. I think a good art direction for me is always somebody who like looks beyond the thing that you're showing them and sees like what your intentions are and where it could go and helps you to get there. Um, does that make sense? Like, uh, I know like Jock and I would always share the stuff that we were working on and like try and sort of help each other out and push it in directions. And it always made the work better on uh, getting, getting good feedback from someone who sort of like understands you and understands what you're going for and like giving you ideas that you might not have con considered um, rather than just like shaping it to their own personal like taste. Um, yeah. Yeah. That, that, I, that was one of the, that was invaluable for me because I think sort of um, if you share it with friends that you trust, you know, that the, the criticism isn't really criticism. It's like, I'm trying to help you get, like, I can see what you're going for and I'm trying to help you kind of, get closer to it and yeah so many times i'd send ollie like a little thing and he just put a few marks over it and, and it'd be like oh yeah that's you've, you've strengthened it and like that that that's magic you know that, that's that's so good to have those kind of relationships um yeah and 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 i would only ever want an, an art director to do that really <laughs> to sort of to 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 augment you know not, not try and change anything just try and uh support and augment you know what, what it is you're going for we had a uh, um, we, we just had um uh Christoph Domoradski and Gabs uh on uh, oh, nice. and, their and their twins and and they they have this oh, they, of, they're great their stuff's so they're good incredible. Yeah. They're, 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 yeah. uh, intricate work is is incredible but they have this sort of like i think in in getting a piece done they have this uh, at times they have almost like a symbiotic <laughs> Mm. sort of relationship they work on their own stuff but it's like at those final moments it's like oh can you help me with it? and then they're and they almost sort of uh, yeah they they, they play off I, each other a lot well I, I i feel like particularly with posters actually um it's um like so when you work on it especially again similarly with posters when, when you you can work on it for a long time right you know sometimes i've had posters i've had for months and i just dip into them every so often and you tweak it and change it and matt i'm sure you're the same with your kind of insane amounts of elements you've got in your poster that you must have them yeah. on your desktop for a long time right yeah um and you know what we we're talking about earlier i feel like what one of the most important things is not to lose sight of that initial spark that you had that made that thing work, you know, that, that whatever, it, whatever it is, whatever it was. And, and as you, I thought, you know, we were talking about earlier, like if you can do a sketch and somebody's think, well, I've done it, you know, and now I've got to render it. And, and, and it's like, a, it's like a, you know, the curve goes down from the, 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 the ideal sketch and then you get to the final and up and, nine times out of 10, the final for me is often not as good as, 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 as my initial concept, really. You've, it's just, you just sort of, you just kill it, you know, as you, you know, as you go along often, like not always, mm. but that, that can happen really easily. And, and I find sort of when you've got friends that can look at it and just go, do you know what, I, you know, da, 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 and, it, and it just, it almost like kicks in to, it reminds you like what it is you're trying to do with it or, or, or it gives it back a little bit of life that you've maybe missed along the way or that can get lost in the, in the rendering or the, in just the doing of it, you know? Um, yeah. and, 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 and I really think, you know, back to the composition thing and particularly with posters, like 
that really is all this whole world is. It's just like, what's your idea? And is it, is it working? Like, you know, and that, you know, that can involve the rendering and everything, making it beautiful, blah, 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 all that stuff. But really the real, the really amazing posters, I think we all remember, are you remember them for the, for the idea, for the, for yeah. the concept, for the composition. Like, you, you, you have know? your, you have your concept. And the most important thing is just to make sure that every element that you add is supporting that concept and anything yeah. that isn't supporting it. Yeah, you just have to sure. throw it in the bin. Like that's just the, it. That's it. Yeah. And, 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 I, and, and often a, a friend can say that when you might be missing it just on that random Tuesday where you might, your head might be in a different place or whatever. And you're just trying to figure it out. And a friend can just go, you know, do you know what? Why don't you just, and just shift it, you know, Dutch it and crop it a bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, we've all been lucky enough to like have, to have like groups of artists around us that we can show work to. And I think that's like super important. Like the people who are like starting out is to, build your support network of other artists who are your friends who you can show things to and get their get their feedback and just never be precious about it yeah like, yeah because because i've like that's, i'm, I'm that's sure that's really I've, important that's really important like don't be precious about it nah like yeah. i'm sure like, i've like, shown like, stuff care, to you guys care, care about it care about it but don't be precious about it yeah. yeah exactly because as soon as you start going like well no my way is the only way fuck you i'm not gonna listen to you like there's no point in having another pair of eyes or an art director because you are set on like delivering the thing that is you're like on a one track rail and you're just mm -hmm. going to make it. However, um, ha however, having yeah. said that, I do think it is important to like one of the things that comes with experience is like having the confidence to like not listen to feedback sometimes as well. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, to, you know what I mean? Like, you're like, <laughs> yeah. well, actually like, I, I, I think this is going to be fine, but it's a careful, it's a careful line. Yeah. Like, and you can, you choose right. the people whose opinion matters. Yeah. Like Robert, Robert, Rob and Eric and Mitch at Mondo are, yeah are pretty flawless in terms of their like they always manage to pick out the one thing that i know isn't right yeah. but i've sent it in anyway and they know it's not right yeah. and they point at it and go this needs fixing or you need to change that and as soon as they say it you go oh yeah of course that needs adjusting yeah. It's, yeah, like, like it's shit, not i thought i could get away with it <laughs> yeah exactly it's, <laughs> yeah well, you just feeling. it is you kind of you get towards the end of a project and you're like ah oh, it's it's not quite right but I haven't got time, so I'll, I'll send it in. And, and someone just circles it and goes, this needs another look at it. Go, of course it does. Like, and I knew that. Um, when you're so close to it, when you're so close to a piece of work, I mean, speaking as, I mean, it's not posters that I design, you know, I, I, I write uh, and, and stuff. And when, you, when you're when you so close to something and you can't see the wood for the trees, having another set of eyes on it, there's just, can be just, can unlock something, you know? Is that? Yeah, you know? yeah, for sure. And yeah, the be the best art directors, like they, I, I can think of maybe four who I've worked with, um, and three <laughs> three of them are Mondo, um, who who just they know the thing that's going to make the bit of work better, and like uh, um, Paul Buckley, who's made editor of Penguin, who I've worked with on all the Carey books, like I trust him so implicitly that if he says change this, even if sometimes even if I'm not sure I would do it anyway, because mm -hmm. he's never ever guided me wrong over like yeah. 10 years and, you know, 30 book covers, Those um, covers are great. every suggestion he's made oh. has, has always helped, you know, it's always made it better. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like I say, I trust him implicitly and there's, there's very few art directors that I, I trust like that. Um, uh, so a uh, key who does our tech Here she is. Hello. Oh. Oh, sorry, <laughs> she, it's getting dark uh, in here. Oh, she's, fuck, she's a great, uh, a great artist in her own right. But uh, she was just asking when you said about putting, um, having that sort of uh, sounding wall. You know, the sounding wall, the the, the, the people you can bounce ideas off. Uh, if you haven't got people who are necessarily uh, in the art space, who are you know, in terms of people that you know. What, yeah. would, what would be a good approach to, to I mean, getting the, that? Those, there are just communities online that exist for that reason. There's like Reddits and Discords and places you, you can find. It, it might take you a little while to, to find the, the people that are right, but like there are people out there in the same situation who, who want feed, like the, the feedback and they want to give feedback. Like That's um, how I learned to do anything. I didn't go to art school. I just posted my work on my art forums and got advice from people who had a little more experience and then you gradually get to a stage where you feel confident like giving some advice as well and you help other people like uh along 
the way. Um, there are communities out there. It might take a little while to, to find the one that's right for you, but they do exist. Also, just like reach out to artists you like. Like the worst we'll say is no, or we won't, we won't answer. I mean, I was a, I was a huge fan of Ollie's work before I knew him. Um, and like, same with Jock, like when I first like interacted with Jock, I was like, holy shit, that's Jock. Like, and he's, he's talking to me about art. Yeah, I know. I know we're, we're friends now. It's fine. But you know, and, and Becky Clunan's another one. Like I've been reading her comics for years and then, and like somehow we're friends now. I still don't quite understand that, but you never know. Like, I mean, um, Sham, um, re, you know, he's someone I've known for a couple years from conventions and stuff. And like, he's hit me up a bunch of times over the year and asked stuff. And like, I, you know, I started doing, cause his work was interesting. And I thought, yeah, I want to, want to chat to you about this. And I mean, fuck it. Why not? What's, what's the harm in reaching out to someone whose work you dig? Yeah. They might, they might take a look at it. They might be able to offer you a bit of, a bit of feedback, a way to improve it. And like, as long as you're open to listening. Yeah. I mean, in fact, you don't even have to listen. You might think they're wrong, but there's no harm in asking. I think that they're weird, Please don't flood my inbox with messages, by the way. I'm really busy this <laughs> week. Like, just to see how... Uh, the, the, Hi, Matt. Here comes I, I the flood. You said. <laughs> yeah, reach out, just not to me. Yeah. <laughs> I drew this on a napkin. Do you like it? Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I, say, I think that in terms of you were saying, like, being reaching out to uh, to other artists, that, that because those artists that you might reach out to have been in that same position then they would under, then they understand the process that's gone through and that the importance of mentors and and the importance of of good feedback and 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 that it's all this sort of journey that goes hey look at that hey, there it is. going somewhere slightly brighter because it's really dark in my kitchen now oh shit it's dark i'm looking at two people there do you not have lights? You know, did you not pay your electricity bill? I was no, say. I've got <laughs> lights. It's just they're they're like they're like bang overhead, and the problem is oh, that they right. they, sh they really show up the thinness here. So I'm trying to find mm. somewhere that's a bit more flattering. Hang on, where <laughs> okay. it that's what so I he do. has got power. We do not need to start a GoFundMe. No, I'm good. I'm good. There we go. Beautiful. Um, Much better. There are so many. Thanks, by, by the way, Matt, oh. I had no idea that, that that was when I first met you that, that you even knew who I was. So thank you. Oh, I, come on! You you were you were drawing Batman. I mean, how was I not going to know? Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> Matt Ferguson has said, if, "If I'm really stuck and no one else can help, uh, this is when talking about posters. Uh, if I'm really stuck and no one else can help, my wife is amazing at pointing out exactly what's crap. Anyone who has who has taste and you respect will be of help. Um, and uh, and she doesn't pull any punches. Uh, hmm. So." Watch out for Matt's wife. I was very lucky. My <laughs> my ex wife was an illustrator as well. <laughs> I was gonna say I was very lucky. My ex wife was an illustrator, and we used to like her. Her input was invaluable because you know she. Firstly, she wouldn't tolerate any of my bullshit, and she would just say, "Stop doing that. You're doing it. You're you're driving yourself crazy, or you're doing it wrong." But also, mm -hmm. you know, she she has a, a really good sense of what looks good. Um, uh, you know don't have to be an artist to offer offer good advice just a fresh pair of eyes is yeah definitely a good thing awesome if people have any more uh questions obviously we we there's the we want to talk a bit about the because obviously uh, there's some uh droppage going on in terms of uh Oli 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 Moss's uh Oli Moss's releases so we will cover that in a, in a few there minutes there is but... something i need to sneak in at some point um the winners of the quiz oh okay I we now. We have a... Okay. Yeah. Um. It was Ian Fraser won the main prize well, with seventy Ian. out of eighty, and his team was called Remember the Tartans. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Joel Woodford uh, came second, sixty nine out of eighty. Nice. 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 <laughs> and Bru <laughs> Yeah. And Bruce got the best team name. <laughs> Jesus I love that, that we take nice. it to the quiz. We've had this like really like insightful conversation, and then we have to admit the fact that we do have a quiz that's hosted by two drunk poster fans. Yes, that does happen on a Saturday. It was, night. it was it fun. I needed to squeeze that in somewhere. Honestly, promise, because otherwise they'll never know. Yeah. I was told to do it. Shout out to uh, to Chris and Darren for for doing that each uh, each time we uh, we run a quiz. They do a good job. Um, do you normally work in silence or do you have some sort of media, music, uh, movie, t uh, TV shows or otherwise on in the background? And that goes out to all of you. Um, um, 
I do a lot of I do a lot of audiobooks. Um, I find I feel like they sort of get in the zone. I remember Jock and I used to recommend each other things to watch, but we had like a specific term. Like if it, if you need, to, we had ones that like you can't watch this while you're working because it's a face watcher. You have to yeah, watch but, it yeah, yeah, face. yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> like, yeah. I'd recommend things like, but you know, I haven't watched it with my face, so yeah. all right, <laughs> my, as good at that as I think it is, and that's when you, when you have something like Taken on with yeah. Liam Neeson's. It's a face and, and, but, 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 but no, no. Oh, when I was, no. I'd be drawing, and I thought, well, that's, that was, seems like a pretty good action over that. But then it was on telly one time late, late at night, and I watched it with, with my face. And I was like, oh, I'm sorry I recommended it. No, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. There's only Taken fans out there. I'm sorry. I don't mean to. I just mean, yeah, we have we, there'd be films on or, or stuff on. and But when you're working and you've got them on, you're not necessarily watching it with your face, you know? Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm doing a different thing, but I can't watch anything that needs any concentration, like or anything with subtitles or anything like that. But I just this massive chat, so I have to. Yeah, watch subtitles, it. subtitles are no go. They're a no go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You but, have to, but, be able to but, follow but, it completely on audio, right? <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's, but to answer your question, years ago I used to work in absolute silence when I was like painting and stuff. But now, you know, I'm, I'm in here every day. It, you know, there's a. There's a, I, I like having either music or films or TV on it, just in the background stuff that, you know, some, some, sometimes it's like comfort food, you know, I can watch, you know, films that we've probably all seen a bunch of times and I can just yeah. have it on and I kind of know it. So you can have, just have it in the background and, and dip in when you want to and pick out mm. nice spots and nice scenes. Um, yeah. Or music, but yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it, you know, it's, I don't know. It's but, but, as I've got older and, and, you, and you do it all the time, you, there's there's a there's a semblance of normality that can come from just listening to something else or having something else on it, mm. and, it and part of your brain is just occupied in just about 20 15 20 percent that you're listening and you can carry on with that and carry on carry on with what you're doing in, in quite a nice mm. way and i find it kind of almost comforting sometimes you know it's yeah, quite, I, a nice, uh, quite a nice thing i found the best thing for that is just like non-fiction audiobooks where you can just dip into and dip out those like little facts and yeah learning something i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i like that very much i'm learning yeah. i just need some i just need some noise in the background doesn't really matter what it is um just run throughs of parks and rec or the office or new girl or really? um Brooklyn Nine Nine, just just something that I know already, and I can just have playing. Yeah, totally. yeah. Not, not Carly Rae Jepsen on loop, Matt. Not I mean, it varies. Yeah, I don't. Sure. To be honest, I I don't listen to a lot of music when I work. I tend to have like either podcasts or or TV. Um, yeah, I find music can be a bit exhausting to have it on. Too yeah, much because it, but, it's, it, if you need like a boost, it's almost like the workout, isn't it? Where you're like, "Fuck, yeah. I just need to finish this." I'll like crank up something that is, I know it's going to like energize yeah. me, but you yeah. can't keep that level of of like. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not all the time. Energy, but, but if if stuff's going well, I can put music on, and like you say, you're kind of almost I crank it up. Yeah, and it's yeah. kind of like there's an excitement, and because you're kind of doing it, and 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 it's all cooking, you know. And yeah. the music blaring, and you're still doing it, and it's getting better and better. And that that's you know, that, that doesn't happen all the time. You can't have that no. all the time, but occasionally no. that, that's really nice when you're just. Kind of, I remember um, uh, I worked with Glenn Dillon. I put I put Pinewood on on a Star Wars movie, and uh, quite quite early on, I sort of worked. Uh, I walked in to speak to um, someone in the office, and Glenn had his headphones on. Like, I think he was working on Rogue One at the time, doing the costume design. And he was just absolutely like, you know, just totally yeah. in, like he was jamming. And, and, it, but he, and I was like, that's the way to do it. You know, if you're yeah. feeling it, just, just absolutely like yeah, put it, you know, pump it up. It's all good. Definitely like that when we were shipping, shipping Half-Life. Uh, yeah. I bet. And I got like the, the standing desk at work and I'm like fucking booming <laughs> in the way. <laughs> it was like, it's yeah. just... There's yeah. also, there's something about like the time aspect of it. Like if you're listening to music, you have a new song every three minutes and it's just mm -hmm. like, there's a constant churn of something new. Whereas if you're watching, you know, like a 20 minute sitcom yeah. or like even movies, I find it's a good way to like, um, like demark how much time I've been spending on something. So it'll be like, okay, I'm going to watch, uh, watch, you know, I'm going to put on three episodes of Parks and Rec now. And that's like an hour roughly. Yeah. Um, whereas with music, yeah, like you're saying, it's sometimes, actually the only time I find that's good is if you put on like something like Godspeed Black Emperor, which yeah. is just like 20 minute oh, long yeah, tracks Godspeed. and that will just go um mm -hmm. or like the last couple of death haven albums have been really good for that because they just kind of like blend into one like hour-long wall of noise um 
and that which is which is kind of good if you want to really you know fucking get into yeah. it well, um one of the things that i've uh that i find when i'm um uh working on on something big and i need to because i've got adhd so I'm like trying to get my hyper focus going and so i listen to something the same album over and over and over again it mm-hmm. makes me hate the album for a quite a long period of time, but in terms of I just sink into this almost hypnotic like yeah uh, you know rhythm of, of just writing and writing and writing. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like um, there's certain filmmakers that I feel that are slightly ambient, like or certain films that, are, that have an ambient quality. Like I think Michael Mann's really ambient. I think you can watch yeah. Heat or even like Miami Vice or whatever it is, and there's a sort of there's a there's a there's a strange ambient quality to the way he makes movies and Alien the first Alien I think is a very ambient movie yeah. and I find that that's quite quite good to work to because you're just kind of in this kind of atmosphere the whole time. Um, Malik which, too. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. going to say Malik. Well, because it's all voiceover, you don't. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You don't even <laughs> yeah. have to watch it, even though they're absolutely beautiful <laughs> movies. <laughs> and you just kind of look up and you see like a slow motion hand kind of wafting through a field. And you're like, okay, that's where you're we beautiful. are. That is beautiful. And draw, yeah. draw some more. You always play the classic wheat hand. So uh, <laughs> we've got sort of we we've got only a, a few minutes left. What I would say is, if people want to submit any questions that I could, that can get like that, I like sort of yes no answers, and then we'll uh, move on to the the talk about the sort of uh, sale. We did this with uh, Matt Ferguson yesterday, and uh, I don't think there'll be the sort of joke questions that came through last uh, uh, yesterday. We had I had to ask Matt Ferguson. Uh, do you think you could fight off a bear with T-Rex arms? And he mistook the question to mean if he himself had T-Rex arms. T-Rex arms. Yeah, but that's, that's how I took it. I, the, question I took that, it. The, the question that I have there is like, if I have T-Rex arms, are they like proportional to my body? Like, are they really small? Are they the size they would oh. be on a T-Rex on me? Because that would be like fucking massive and brilliant. So I okay. guess. <laughs> see, I think it was actually what if the bear had T-Rex arms is... is but I, I really don't oh. I think there are so many interpretations right. of that question. It's quite Can difficult. it still climb trees if it has a <laughs> if it has T Rex arms? These are the you need to get way more specific about your hypothetical bear yeah, situation. Like, and and also you all, you guys all fucking live in the UK where like a bear attack isn't a thing that you might have to worry about ever, <laughs> where it's like um, Hypothetical guy, Bear Situation is a good band name. <laughs> the Bear Situation. <laughs> so in terms of uh, quick questions, we've got one from Muragai who said, Jock and Ollie, are there any brand new films that have come out that make you feel that sort of desire to make a poster, to get back into the poster world? Does that happen? I know obviously you've said you've got other commitments, so you're, so you're sort of like, well, that's what I'm doing. Uh, yeah. But are there yeah. films where you're like, oh, do you know what? Not really, not really, because like I, there's so much stuff being made right now. It just feels like it's all being covered, and it, the work's really good. So, like, what's the point? <laughs> to, to, um, there are some yeah, great uh, artists out there at the moment. Yeah, know, right, totally. And Muragaya is a great example. Yeah. Um, S- uh, similarly, a film I love, but I'm not sure I actually want to make a poster for it. But I loved uh, Midsummer. I thought that was yeah, that was so amazing, um, and that That's definitely amazing. got me got me going. But I don't know what I could bring to a poster, to be honest. But uh, really enjoyed the Green Knight this year. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. In that Most brief, brief not not that I've seen it in the UK till the 24th September. Ollie, oh shit, yeah, really? Yeah, just just so in that brief, brief <laughs> where it felt like we were okay to go to the cinema, and I was like, right, I'm just going to fucking fill my boots and <laughs> just like. Yeah. <laughs> really, really went for it and got to see as much as I could. I liked old actually. I really enjoyed old. I was surprised. By how much Which one is that? That's not the M night. Sh- yeah, it uh, is. Oh, the beach one. Is it? I'm yeah. not. All right, right. It's yeah. mad. I really like. I really appreciate it. I went to see it and I thought, and I came out and I was like, I'm not sure how I felt about that. I enjoy. I was like, I think it's crap, but I really enjoyed watching it. And the more I thought about it, I'm like, no, actually, I think it. I think it might be really good. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's Jock. Do you, I think it's I think it's aimed at Jock. It might, might be aimed at all of you. To be fair, uh, no, I, maybe it's all of you. Do you still get a buzz when you walk into a comic book shop? Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's been yes. a while since I've been in a comic book shop, but um, yeah, I, if I see one of my covers, it's yeah, it's you know. It, yeah, is that, like, all, you, is that uh, all you need to see something that you've made? You walk in, are you, are you disapp- yeah. do you walk in and you're like, bruh, bruh, bruh. oh, this is a bit disappointing, and then you see the, and then you see one of your own things, and you're like, fuck yeah. <laughs> do you then go and stand next to it, and just like, yeah. Yeah. stand there real casual, like, like, yeah, that's. Uh... 
Uh, it's me. Part of me is just super surprised that, uh, that there's even anything there. So, so I, yeah, I can't deny. It. Uh, yeah, Ollie's right. I made it about me, and that isn't what the question was. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be honest, I've been like so. I like I haven't really had a chance. Like I've been really sort of stuck in the with the pandemic that I would get a buzz from basically going into any shop right now. Like, <laughs> I, oh, oh, this is this is a bit good, isn't it? It's like um, things to buy. It's nice. Uh, uh, Jock, any hints on your uh, Batman comic? Yes. It takes place over one night in a blackout, and it's called One Dark Night. You're welcome. Very nice. Um, I think that this would be a whole other session, and you're welcome to come back, Ollie, if you want, but ask Ollie about Garfield. I think that would be quite <laughs> oh, right. extensive. Which, well, what, what do you mean? But it just says ask Ollie about Garfield. It, it, it sounds like it's something that you could talk for a long time. You have to get on. way more specific. Why? Um, what do you love? Why about Garfield? Garfield so much? What do I like about what do I like about Garfield? I like that Garfield. I like the consistency of Garfield. I like <laughs> you, you can't like you can never sort of go. Oh, you know, I like Garfield like when it was good. Eighty three to eighty six. It's it's it came out and it maintained the absolute same level of quality <laughs> for, for absolutely for years and years and years, and still managed to create like an absolutely massive mad empire of like merchandise. And stuff. I don't know. There's something there's something about it that I find uh, fascinating. I swear to God, that Gundam um, Garfield you made was still one of my absolute favourite things. Oh, I keep thinking I, I preferred the Nigel Thornbury one, but that was just because that I, was good as well. But Garfield. it's a better model. Like it's only because I'm like looking at him, like, oh, that's a better model. I should go back and do. I want to do more of those. They just take so fucking long. Yeah, and doing those big models is so enjoyable. And then make that just takes forever. Uh, Carly draws asks Jock, do you still get time to read comics in addition to drawing them? Oh, uh, Carly, unfortunately, I do not read a lot of comics. I've got a pile by friends that I'm trying to get to, and um, no, I, t I tend to I tend to skim them. To be honest, um, that sounds really bad, but uh, not I, you know I draw them all the time. So no, unfortunately, I don't read as much as I would like to. Okay, uh, James Hobson, who runs uh, More Art Gallery, says uh, because they've they've gotten the license to various toys. Uh, Ollie, if you want to do a uh, Mr. Potato Head piece, hit him up. Um, All right. Yeah, just stare. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Have you geeked out about any celeb talking positively, positively about something you did? Um, there was the one time on the one show where Elijah Wood talked about I, with me and Mike Mitchell. I, dude, <laughs> which I, was very I saw funny. that, Ollie, Ollie. I saw that live, like yeah. randomly. We had and the one show on in the front room and I was like, yeah. wow. And that's I was like there, one of those. I was not in the photo. And that was one of those ones that was quite fun because it's like, right, I can point my family to this and they'd understand that that's like a thing that, uh, that it's something that they'd understand. Yeah, so I'm on the telly. Yeah, what, yeah, totally. It, it's it totally you? like she's like, wait, what is this thing you do? I don't really understand this thing you do. But if you go like, I was on the one show, and then she's like, Ooh. <laughs> you know, like that. Was um, it was it you, Daniel Danger, Mike Mitchell, maybe? Yeah, and Elijah yeah, was doing Daniel was doing like a photo bomb in the background. Yeah. Oh shit! I remember that photo. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, I think that's all about we've got time for. Um, guys, it's been. We're, we're going to talk about the uh, the releases from Uniquely Geekly, but in terms of the interview stuff, thank you so much for coming. Uh, ben, if you can just give, let us know a little bit about what's about to drop on the old uh, Uniquely Geekly store. It's just a small selection of older AP. Yeah. Including a couple of pieces that people may not have enough to get their hands on. Um, certainly something that's not ever been allowed out. And uh, we'll drop the um, uh, link in the old uh, in the in the comments for us on there. That'd be great. Oh yeah, I will do. Yeah. And I probably need to put them on the store at some point as well because I missed the last drop six o'clock by about ten minutes because <laughs> <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> so yeah, I will do that. Um, yeah, I mean, you, you, thank you so much. I know this is such a rarity, I think, to to have a conversation like this take place. Uh, you know, for for people to see and and all of that. So thank you so much. Uh, for coming um 
Thanks, Gareth. You're more yeah, no, this has, been, this has been really enjoyable. Like, I mean, yeah. I, I, haven't, I haven't seen Matt and Jock in so long. Like, right. Yeah. This, it's such because right before the pandemic sort of kicked into full gear, you were due to come to Seattle. Yeah. Uh, for, Emerald City, for Emerald City and that was going to be like the first time we've seen each other in ages and then we and, and that didn't happen that was yeah 18 months ago so yeah it's been lovely and I'm glad you can make it Matt as well thanks yeah, for yeah. Right. well I mean I really saw Jock in the summer so I've seen him recently but it's, it's so <laughs> nice to see you Ollie yeah, it's, it's, it's really nice to be a conduit for that and that's the the whole point last year when we started this thing you know put the Amp Jam poster convention and, and social was the idea of the fact that in-person conventions which is when a lot of these collectors get to see each other in the flesh just weren't happening that year and sort of bringing people yeah. together so to do that for artists you know that's just that's the epitome of what we're after is to is to bring yeah. some people together so i'm glad you've uh, you've gotten to see each other yeah um, well hopefully we can do this again in the future in yeah real life. Time like here. that would yeah. be absolutely amazing we would be honored to have you um jock you're gonna be at thought bubble aren't you yes that's the plan. Yeah, you come in. Yeah, Ollie, come on over. Come on. I'm not come allowed. Le- I'm legally not allowed. <laughs> legally not allowed. <laughs> I'm legally not allowed. Yeah. I've been banned from football. No, yeah, I, yeah. I can leave. I can leave the US, but if I do, I won't be allowed back in. Due oh, to oh yeah, good point. Restrictions, so I have to stay here. <laughs> well, um, so uh, Seattle e- e- uh, EEC has been rescheduled for December, and I'm apparently coming. So I hope to see you then. Awesome. Okay. I mean. Is it a good idea? I don't know. But <laughs> Who knows? That's the current Who plan. Knows? We'll see how it goes. Yeah. We shall be joined by Tyler Stout in about eight minutes, but it'll probably be a bit. Oh more. no way! Yeah, Amazing. I know. Well, I know. No way. How? How? I don't. How can we get him in on this? Time. Like, I'd love to speak to Tyler. What, what the hell? Yeah, I've never, never spoken to him. Man, I'd love to. Yeah. I've never, yeah. I've never spoken to him either. Oh my goodness! Uh, we'll, uh, we'll end. I just want to know how he does it, see, and I'll have a conversation uh, with you guys and see what I didn't even think that I didn't think that that was a possibility. <laughs> Uh, we'll see what happens, uh, guys. I'll see you in a minute. I'll see you in a few minutes. All right. So we're going to end the cool. stream and we'll talk to you. <laughs> All right. Thanks for everyone. Right. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, thank you. It's been awesome.